Hello friends, this is Layla Harris. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, former CTMH maker, and tonight I want to show you how to make this card. This is the new two-tone garden green cardstock, which is lighter on the back. For this card, I am going to emboss it with the Forever Plaid 3D embossing folder. I am also going to use the Painted Trees embossing folder and emboss the light side of the cardstock. I am now going to take a sanding block, one that you could potentially file your nails with, or um, this one is actually specifically for crafting, and I am going to sand the raised area of the cardstock. I'm doing it really gently because you can always sand more, but if it is over sanded, you will tear your paper. I'm going to sand the plaid in the same way. I went over the center just a little bit, I am mostly focusing on the edges because that's what we will see in this project. Before we put these layers together, let's attach the sentiment with a ribbon. This is the Christmas label stamp and die bundle. I had stamped this over at a friend's house. It is gorgeous with its elegant die cuts. I have a hard time lining up my ribbon on the back of the card. So I am just drawing a few little tick marks here to make sure that I can wrap it around the card and have it straight. I am hearing this ribbon with some dot adhesive, and then I am going to cover the back of the card with a generous amount of dot adhesive or snail tape runner. When you're doing an embossed card like this, with all that texture, you're going to need to use about twice as much adhesive especially if you're also adhering it onto another embossed piece like I am in this project. I am going to use a pre-folded white card base. I noticed that there's a blemish on the front of this card. I had actually set it aside beforehand, and since this card has a completely covered card front, I don't mind using that card base today. Just like before, you will want to use lots of adhesive to adhere this 3D embossed piece of cardstock to the cards. Now let's add some ribbon knots to the edges of the label. I'm not really sure what you call these things, but it's literally a piece of ribbon that is tied in a knot for a faux bow. This cherry cobbler and gold ribbon is really nice to work with. It is a soft ribbon, so when you tie a knot, it's not going to make a huge, thick bump in your card, especially if you send it to someone. You're going to see me zip through this video here, but I ended up just adhering them uh, one on each side of the label with mini glue dot. This glue dot dispenser I have had for years and years. They are really handy to have them in a plastic dispenser case if you are taking glue dots to a crop. I don't know how many times I've used a classic box of glue dots and had them all over my scissors ruler projects when I've returned home from a crop. These little dispensers are really great for on-the-go scrapbooking, especially if you're one who just throws everything into a bag like I do. Before I start embellishing, I'm going to touch this up a little bit more with my sanding block, just to give it as much contrast as possible. I am going to use the iridescent foil gems, and I am going to color them with my Cherry Cobbler Blends marker. This is a permanent marker that does great on embellishments and does not rub off. I'm using the brush tip. I'm fanning them so they dry a little more quickly. It probably only takes 10 to 20 seconds for them to become completely dry, but I just want to be sure. Okay, it's been over a week since I recorded this video, and not very long ago, I finally realized what was going on with my Take Your Pick tool. The really sharp, pokey end, instead of the flat scraper, is on the very other end of this tool and I was using it wrong here, and it was causing me a lot of trouble. In one case, it just basically catapulted my 
gem across my desk. Here I am just coloring a few more of the gems on the carrier sheet. I really recommend doing it on the carrier sheet that the embellishment comes on instead of on your project because you never know if your marker is going to go all the way down to the edge and bleed onto your project. I'm still frustrated at this point with my take your pick tool. You see here I have flipped it around and I'm using the sticky end of it. And I am still struggling. This sticky end is really fabulous for die cuts that are tiny or loose gems that don't have adhesive that you're setting down on a little dot of adhesive. I even went as far as knocking the adhesive off of one of my dots and having to use a micro glue dot to fix it. But as of this night, I know that all I really needed to do was flip that little tool around with the flat end and my lovely pick would be waiting there for me. As we wrap up this card, I'm going to show you a picture of these iridescent oil gems. They are simply gorgeous. They have flecks of foil inside with an iridescent shimmer that still remains when you color it with a red marker. Here's our finished card. I hope this project helps you understand the benefits of two-tone cardstock with white core and how embossing it gives you a lovely design. This is going to be a great addition to the Stampin' Up! product line. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you. Have a great day.